So the time has come to make a prediction on Poirier versus Makachev. Let's go. You know, this for Dustin Poirier is his last opportunity to get a title. He said as much in some interviews, and he said he's coming to lay it all on the line. And if we know anything about Dustin Poirier, we know that's true. He's, sure. there, he's going to let it all hang out. Whether he's the undisputed champion at the end of the fight or not is to be determined, but we're going to get everything Dustin Poirier's got and then some. The trouble that he's up against is that he's fighting perhaps the the most complete fighter in the entire UFC right now. Islam Makashev is not just a grappler. He's not just a guy that can ground and pound positionally. He's now a guy that can knock you out by head kick. Right. His striking has come along extremely well. He's got great wrestling. He's also got great judo style throws and trips like that. His Muay Thai clinch work is phenomenal. So I see the opportunity for Dustin here being a very narrow one, and that's to do what he did to Benoit Saint-Denis. He's got to box him up. The yep. one place that I think Dustin is better than Islam is pure boxing. I think Islam, probably from kickboxing range, can do some damage with kicks and those long punches and, and, and could beat Dustin there. In boxing range, Dustin can make something happen. Now, he's a three and a half to one underdog. Islam is a four to one favorite. It's a very tall order. And I haven't even mentioned yet the 35 curse that yeah. Dustin is now up against because no fighter, I think it's 0 and 16 or something like that. Uh, from 170 on down for the men's divisions has won a title after 35 years of age. So, you know, not to say there's no way Dustin can win, but the road to victory is very narrow. Yeah, I guess the curse is a very real thing if those are the statistics that are, yeah. are following it. And yeah, I love this fight. I think Dustin Poirier is the right guy to be fi facing Islam Makhachev. And, you know, he had his chance against Khabib. And unfortunately, he's living in an era where Khabib passes the belt off, essentially, to Islam Makhachev. And while everybody will, will tell you still, and Islam himself will tell you that Khabib is a better fighter than me, uh, the game of MMA progresses so fast. And there are no one-trick ponies in this game anymore. I believe Islam Makhachev, skill-wise, is a, a better fighter than Khabib Nurmagomedov. And I do, too. I think, you know, Islam will tell you Khabib's better, and Khabib will tell you Islam's better. And you're never going to get the real answer. But as far as MMA goes, it progresses at this insane rate and while people used to just chalk it up and, and be lazy with their talking points about the, the Dagestani fighters oh they're good grapplers just just strike with them that's just not the case anymore some of their striking is really high level and from the top to bottom whether they're in Bellator the UFC or wherever they're fighting if their last names are Magomedov or they come from that stable of fighters they're coming with some really high level striking really great kicks and then their boxing's also getting really really good and one thing that sticks out to me about uh, Islam Makhachev and, and, and you know you see Umar Magomedov do it their willingness to throw uh, creative things and more risky strikes like head kicks and, and, and things that most people try to shy away from when you're fighting somebody at the highest level is they are not worried about the takedown. You're not going to see Dustin Poirier change levels and try to take Islam Makhachev down. Almost nobody goes for takedowns against these guys. So that really does open up their ability to get a little bit crafty and creative with their striking. And everybody knows that that faint to the level change is there for Islam Makhachev. And if you're, if you're a smart fighter, you have to respect the feints. And you don't know when he's going to shoot. You know one thing's for certain. When you fight Islam Makhachev, you're going to wind up on your back at some point in the fight. But you can't uh, tell which one's going to be a feint because they do it so well. They, they are able to throw their kicks. They're able to throw their jabs. And then eventually they know where you're, when your back's up against the cage or just close enough to the cage, they can change that level and get a hold of you. And then they're going to put you on the ground, whether it's through a body lock or a trip or whatever it might be. They uh, not only are they progressing in all realms of the sport from the striking and, and their ability to just adjust on the fly, but their grappling is also evolving. Yes. It's not like it was a finished thing with Khabib. Khabib and them are still out there making adjustments to their grappling game, which is, is almost uh, scary to think about. It because is. What are the Dagestani fighters going to be looking like in 10 years from now? Like, Are they going to be even more advanced than what we're seeing right now? Uh, history would tell you yes. And I think that Islam Makhachev has way more ways to win this fight. I love that you brought up the kickboxing range because if we were lazy uh, fighter, uh, lazy commentary guys in the MMA world, we would say Islam Makhachev just needs to get the fight to the ground. Dustin Poirier just needs to keep it standing up. But I think Islam Makhachev's kickboxing skills are actually superior to Dustin Poirier's. Dustin does a lot of great work with his hands, and he's usually able to shut the lights out on pretty much everybody in the in the lightweight division. 
but Islam's a different animal. He doesn't get roped into your style of fight. He engages on his terms. He fights the game plan. And nine times out of 10, he is the one that's leading the dance in the octagon. And I just don't really see Dustin Poirier being able to stay inside boxing range, which remember, we've got kickboxing range, we've got boxing range, and then we've got tie, tie clinch and grappling range. And those are really the three zones that you can fight in in MMA until the fight goes to the ground. I don't see Dustin Poirier being able to do enough damage and stay in boxing range and, and not be uh, taken down for long enough in the fight to knock uh, Islam Makhachev out. Islam knows how to utilize every bit of the cage. He knows how to kick really well. He knows how to take away your weapons. And look, I mean, when what he did to Volkanovski, I know it was on a short, short notice fight, was nothing short of spectacular. Uh, Volkanovski was a pound for pound number one guy not that long ago. He didn't land a single significant strike on Islam Makhachev. And I think Dustin Poirier is going to have to look for very interesting ways to get inside, do a whole bunch of damage in the boxing range, and then get out. He's yeah. got to take this by by the exchange. Don't go out there looking for round after round. What you have to do is go, I, I need to win this exchange. Stay away from the kicks. Stay away from the grappling, of course. Get to your zone. Fire off your punches. Fire off some good stuff. Try to zap the body a little bit. Maybe land some of those the, those calf kicks or, 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 or inside leg kicks, and then get out of there. You have to stay away. You can't. What we call it in, in, in fighting is admiring your work. You can't throw a great combination and then hang out there and admire what you've just done. You've got to do it and then just get back out. So it's a, it's a tall order. I, everybody knows, the odds makers know that this is a, a very tough fight for Dustin Poirier to win. But like you said, this is his last opportunity at an undisputed title in the UFC. And while it's up against the, the number one fighter in, in the UFC currently and, and uh, top five or top ten most skilled fighters the UFC has ever seen in Islam Makhachev, there is still a chance that he can get his get the job done. Anything can happen in a fight. Islam Makhachev has been knocked out one time in his career. It's his only loss. But if Islam's not safe and he doesn't take Dustin Poirier seriously, which I'm not alluding to at all, uh, we, we could see an upset happen. But for me, it's very hard to see the way Dustin Poirier gets that done just because I don't see that exchange in the boxing realm happening all that often. Yeah, so what Dustin Poirier has to do, in my opinion, is he has to, as you said, take it exchange by exchange. That was a very good point. But he's got to do enough damage in those exchanges to win moments and start to deteriorate Islam, the fighter. Yeah. He also needs to keep the kicks below the knee. He's got a great calf kick. He can work that if he wants to. You're not going to reach down and catch a calf kick. That's, right. a, that's a really risky play because you have to dip your head down. And if you dip your head down, you're going to eat a knee up the middle. Islam's a very seasoned fighter. He knows that. He's not going to attempt to catch a calf kick. So right. anything above the knee, Islam will play ball with. And he's got very good catches. And then he's got very good trips and sweeps that come after those catches. And then once he's got you on the ground, we know where things go. Unfortunately for Dustin in his previous title fights, he tends to get submitted. Now, I'm not saying Dustin's a bad grappler. And the whole notion that I know Islam and Khabib, they like to joke, you know, some of these guys shouldn't be black belts. Yeah. Dustin Poirier is a black belt. Yeah, but there's levels to grappling, and Islam just happens to be above most black belts. Um, right. All black belts when you're talking about MMA. Right. You know, because he submitted Charles Oliveira. But if, if he were to fight Charles Oliveira in a jiu-jitsu competition, who knows what the case would be. But the point is that Dustin Poirier is going to be very game on the ground, but eventually he will break just like Charles Oliveira did. Right. He cannot spend too much time down there. The other thing he needs to do is when he does defend a couple of the takedowns, it, there's a, a half a second or so where there's a scramble and Islam's not set, you're not set, and you need to look for a big shot or two, you know, a hook, an uppercut, an elbow, something, anything to do damage while Islam is resetting mm -hmm. and off balance. Create if he can, some space. Exactly. If he can do that, you know, maybe you can start to separate him from his consciousness, which is very hard to do because Islam's proven that he's had a chin. But I'll say all that to say... I just don't think it's in the cards for him. You have the 35 curse. You have Islam being one of the most skilled fighters in the entire UFC's roster, if not the most skilled fighter. Right. You have Islam with an incredible grappling pressure and submission game. And on the flip side of that, you have Dustin Poirier losing most high-level title fights by submission. I just think the writing's on the wall for Islam Makhachev to defend his belt here. And listen, I like Islam as much as anybody. He's a right. great fighter, one of my favorite skillful fighters to watch in the UFC. 
deep down it hurts me to make that prediction because Dustin Poirier is one of my favorite fighters. Right. Like, And I think of all people that have been uh, a fan favorite and a company man that deserve to touch undisputed, it's Dustin Poirier. But I just have to call it how I see it here. Yeah. I think Islam Makhachev wins this fight yeah, by it, submission. Uh, it's a great call. And, you know, whether it goes into the later rounds or whether it gets done early, I'm leaning towards a late round uh, finish for Islam. Uh, you just have to admire what Dustin Poirier's done. And I'm not writing him off by any means. He can get the job done. He is a, a great fighter. He's the number one contender, and he belongs in that spot. And look, if it's not the undisputed title, then who knows? He might be able to touch a different belt. Maybe the BMF belt comes back into his, uh, into his area, and he's able to grasp that at some point. But I know deep down Dustin really wants that undisputed title. But unfortunately, like I said earlier, he's in the Khabib era and the Islam era. And there was this notion back in the day where that people would, would, would kind of paint with a broad brush the, the, the Dagestani fighters, they, they just hold you down and beat you up and then win by decision, boring decision. Look, Islam Makhachev is getting all of his wins by finish right now. Whether he's knocking you out or he's submitting you, he's getting you out of there in less than 25 minutes. So uh, for me, I don't really look at it as one of those things where he's going to try to hold Dustin down and not, and not get the submission. Dustin Poirier is a formidable opponent, and anybody that can get a win over Dustin Poirier on their resume is going to look to do that. And Islam Makhachev is at such a high level of greatness right now that he's not even looking to just get his hand raised. He's looking to do it in ways that you might not think are possible. Like, okay, D Dustin Poirier is really good at, at striking. He's known as one of the better strikers out there. He's knocked out some of the best strikers in the game. I want to knock him out. So that there's some sort of like internal competitive edge that these guys from Dagestan, especially Islam right now, they have. They're like, I, not only do I want to beat you, I want to beat you at what you don't think I can beat you at. I want to go out there and I e. submitting you. Charles Oliveira. Exactly. Knocking out Volkanovsky. Exactly. And if Dustin Poirier is a wise guy, which he is, he's got a great camp of, uh, of uh, uh, coaches and everything behind him. They're going to study what Volkanovsky did in the first fight because yeah. the scrambling, like you said, is going to be a key factor to this. If he can make Islam Makhachev shoot a couple of times and not have great success with his takedowns or his ability to, to hold top position on the bottom, that will start to make Islam a little bit tired, make him seem a little bit more human. And that's when Dustin Poirier is going to have to be very precise with his striking because if you can telegraph a little bit longer of, of the takedown or, or the feint, or you can start to see the shots coming a little bit sooner. You can start to either utilize lateral foot movement. You can utilize some feints up the middle, some knees, some elbows, and try to just deter Islam from taking you to the ground. But again, like I said, it, it's going to be the boxing range that wins Dustin Poirier this fight. I think Islam Makhachev is going to be perfectly content with striking from the outside until he feels like Dustin Poirier feels like he needs to close the distance. Once Dustin Poirier closes the distance, he's going to forget for a second that Islam Makhachev is this dominant grappler, and then you're going to see a body lock get cinched up, and then he's going to wind up on the ground. And it's just going to be one of those situations that Islam's not going to go out there and show you his cards right off the bat. Hey, I want to take you down. I want to submit you. No, I, I don't think that. I think Islam Makhachev is a very smart fighter. He's got a great fight IQ. And what they're able to do is frustrate their opponent enough with the, the long strikes, with the kicks, with these creative long kicks and, and long punches to make them feel like they need to engage. And now what you've done for the grappler is just close the distance for him. And that, to me, is a thing of beauty. It's something I never get tired of seeing. When you see a high-level grappler rope somebody into closing the distance on them, they're like, thank you, that's exactly what yep. I wanted. It's a thing of beauty. Islam Makhachev's the best at it in the business right now. And I'm going to go with you as well. I, I'm going to say fourth round, third or fourth round submission for Islam Makhachev. I don't know if it's going to be uh, a rear naked choke. I could see him actually going with some uh, with a limb, maybe maybe another uh, Dan Hooker style submission where he gets that key lock or yeah. you know uh, even could a, it be a guillotine? Even an yeah. armbar. See, that's the type of thing we love <laughs> about Islam. Those guys they want to beat you at what you do best. And look, I, I got a lot of crap in the comments for saying that Dustin Poirier has one of the best guillotines in the entire sport of MMA. Because people like to remind me that he's never finished anybody with a guillotine in MMA. But I will tell you this. Whether you've had five submissions on the local level or in the beginning phases of your UFC career and you've got them all by submission, yeah, I can say that's pretty impressive. But very few people have ever put Khabib Nurmagomedov in a real threatening guillotine before. So while some people have more 
uh, finishes via guillotine than Dustin Poirier. I still stand by the fact that Dustin Poirier has one of the best guillotines in the game because the fact that he got Khabib Nurmagomedov in such a deep guillotine. So for me, I think Islam Makhachev is going to go out there to try to prove a point, cement himself even further into the pound-for-pound pound discussion. And look, I think he's going to do one more fight here at 155, and I think he's going to go for champ-champ status. I'd love to see what happens there, but he's not going to look over Dustin Poirier. I'm not looking over Dustin Poirier, but I think the odds makers have it right. About 4-1 to one favorite Islam Makhachev by submission round 3 or 4. Agreed.